You'll not, uh, you'll not miss the colour, will you? Restyled the front a little bit. So, check out the interior. Uh, right, let's give it a go. Let's go E-Drive, high performance style. Well, I think I've engaged drive. It's awesome. It's, inc it's instant, but it's smooth. Now that is way, way more than I expected. I'll try and not hit any of the cones. First ex experience of electric car, uh, you will not believe the performance. Standard socket, yep. like a smart TV, and all the electric Daimler um, electric cars. Yeah. And you just oh. take this one. Can I try? Yeah. So even I've never done this before. I should be able to do this that easily. Yeah, easy. You put it in. That's it. You start charging now. And uh, with this standard charge, what would you expect? Flat screen. Um, In many ways, it's more responsive than the standard V8 because it's not having to wait for a small delay when the driver's asking for fuel to go in the engine. Obviously, the limitation is that it has a single gear, so eventually that ratio will run out of, of uh, the ability to get to very top speed. But in terms of it's not to 60 or not to 100 and whatever it is kilometers an hour, it's right there with the, uh, the SLS, which would come over this really funky Norwegian bridge.
the performance in terms of the, the, the torque when you leave um, from, from a pull-away is so constant. You know, there's no hesitation, which obviously, you know, with a, with a naturally um, combustion engine, you're always going to have a small hesitation there. So I, I really came here with no expectation of what the performance could be like. And I, I've been blown away with uh, the acceleration characteristics. With talking with the engineers, it makes complete sense that when you have each of the wheels independently driven, then you can set it up to make sure you get maximum traction from each of those corners. Because of course, when you if you go in a straight line, then it's a lot lot easier to get the maximum out of each tire. But suddenly, when you start to have corners and lateral G, naturally you have roll in the car. Then of course, each footprint has more or less grip available. So to be able to control that is a very efficient way to, to use the battery power and also a very efficient way to get the maximum out of your cornering. The center of gravity, ultimately, once they develop the system better, then you'll be able to put all of the battery as low as possible. So the, the potential for having a better center of gravity with an electric car is definitely there because obviously in a normal uh, you know, combustion engine, you, you have a certain volume which has to sit above the axle line, otherwise it uh, will become a tank. <laughs> well, it's a single gear, uh, and this, uh, you know, is obviously designed to operate to a certain top speed. Obviously, if you wanted to achieve very high speeds beyond normal road car driving, then you would need to set the gearing accordingly. Um, but for the sort of driving we're doing here, you, you just accelerate. You simply pull away. There's no fear of, of being outside the torque char uh, characteristic of the, the engines because it's, it's a constant torque from when you, when you start to accelerate. Well, you'd think it would be strange not having the, the background noise, but the reality is I think that the driving experience comes from the seat of the pants. It comes from the, your body. You don't drive because of your ear. You know, we're used to having the noise of powerful engines, so that becomes our, our sort of reference. But in actual fact, you can maybe hear in the background because the, the car is still powered up. It's humming away, and because you have to cool the system, you have to make sure you keep the batteries at a particular temperature, there is like a noise of the car ticking over. And of course, once you accelerate, there's a whining of the, the, the moving parts and the, the, the actual car itself. So you have the sensation 